Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of the Dragons, Den, blogger of Inside the OAA. I'm one of the hosts, Queen Taramina, and Ori Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome our friends watching on Oxford Community Television and also those watching on YouTube. Got a good show to talk to you about today. We've got a lot of football to talk about, of course, um, a lot of close games, a lot of um, some controversial games, and um, also, you know, what teams could be in line to make a serious playoff run. We're also going to talk about the big volleyball matchup heading on Tuesday between the um, Dragons and Wolves. Of course, that is the big matchup not only in the OAA calendar, but also in the state calendar as well. So, and also, we got others to talk about picks for this upcoming week's games, of course, which some of them will be played on Thursday because of the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur. So let's talk about recap what happened last week. And one of the things that you look at is teams that have really been playing well, but then there are teams that have really been struggling. And probably the there were two real, three really good games that um, really made the... Um, well, it was for the league this week, of course, the um, West Bloomby Adams game, the Groves Harrison game, and of course the Southfield Arson Tech and um, Orion game, along with the Rochester and Seaholm game. So, four really good games, maybe five if you count Avondale Royal Oak, but the rest of them were just shockingly blowouts. And, you know, when you look at blowouts, I mean, it, it, it really sometimes can derail a team. And, you know, when you look at, when I look at, of course, blowouts, you know, I look at, there were three games, there were two games that were 48 nothing. I mean, when you look at with Clarkson, what they did to Oxford, and, of course, Bloomfield Hills, what they did to Troy Athens. Um, basically, I mean, and, of course, Oak Park, what they did to Stony Creek. It was all by the same score, 48 nothing. So, you know, so basically, that was a very popular number this week was 48 to nothing. And that is really, really ugly, to say the least. But let's look, let's recap some of these games here. Um, I'm going to recap the first one, which was really interesting. It was West Bloomfield, Rochester Adams. Took place at Rochester Adams. When you look at how that game unfolded, of course, um, it ended up being a gamble by Tony Petrino, um, which ended up um, backfiring on the Highlanders, and West Bloomfield ended up recovering an onside kick which led to West Bloomfield beating Adams 17-16. Now, the big plays of the game, I thought, was a 99-yard touchdown pass from Bryce Veasley to Trey Mosley. And that ended up being a huge, huge part of that game because it was a 10-10 game at the time. And then, of course, West Bloomfield was back to the one-yard line. And then, of course, Veasley threw it with confidence to Mosley, knowing he was there. He got past two Adams defenders, which led to the touchdown. So when you look at... That was a big difference maker in that one. And then Adams scoring late, led, of course, by Chase Carletta. He scored a um, two-yard touchdown run to, um, you know, to make it a one-point game. But it, the reason why Adams lost that game was because of that gamble by Petrito. And I think, you know, if they don't gamble, it's a 17-17 game. We're heading into overtime. You know, I think Adams might have a better chance at overtime against West Bloomfield. But instead, they gambled to we'll go for two. Very similar to a Ohio State-Michigan game back in 2013 where um, Michigan, instead of tying a score, like, you know, normally they, should, they went for two and tried to get the win and unfortunately didn't work out. So, you know, very, very similar circumstances there in that one. So, but you got to give um, Ron Bellamy and his team a lot of credit. I mean, especially bouncing back from an 0-2 start like they've had to go through. And basically, West Bloomfield right now, they're rolling right now, and they're, they're, starting to, they're starting to look like the team that a lot of people looked at, expected heading into the year. Um, could possibly be a state championship contending team. They still got to address some things. I mean, no doubt the running game is a big, big issue for West Bloomfield going forward. But, you know, for West Bloomfield, they're looking, finally looking like that championship team they're more than capable of doing. For Adams, you know, this was a tough loss for them. They really, they really, they played well. I mean, they, they played the perfect game plan. They, they did very well. They shut Adams down. I mean, they shut West Bloomfield down at times. I mean, like, you know, this is a good football team. Rochester Adams is a really good football team. 
They're going to do some damage during the season. You know, I mean, this is no fluke of a team. Adams is very good this year, and they're going to get a lot better, you know, especially now when you look at they've had quarterbacks that are proven. Zach Solon, of course, is a senior, but you have Carter Ferris weighing in the wings. And you look at, of course, Adams, you know, this is a team that could be a really dangerous team come playoff time. Depends where they're going to be put at, you know, but, but Adams, they're a team that could be a team worth watching, a really dangerous team going forward. So good win for Coach um, Bob Bellamy, but Tony Petrino's team I think is going to be really okay going forward into that stretch. So, you know, for West Bloomfield, it's going to be um, for Adams, I think they're fine. You know, I'm not pressing the panic button or anything on this Highlander football team right now, even though they got a big one this upcoming week with Southfield Arts and Tech going forward. A team that really suffered a lot was Seaholm. Of course, they lost a heartbreaker to Rochester at home, 28-27. I mean, you know, when you look at that one, I thought these were two teams I thought really had disappointing seasons. Um, of course, both teams have senior experience. Both teams are very talented. But, you know, for, for Rochester to go on the road and get this win like that against Seaholm, it's a big win for Coach Eric Vernon. For Seaholm, it's what what if, you know, for them it's what if. What if Seaholm, you know, basically, um, you know, beat Bloopy Hills that first game? What if they, you know, been very competitive? I mean, they're try they're being competitive. I think they got a real good chance of beating Troy. I mean, but Troy, that's a whole other discussion. We'll talk about Troy coming up, but but for Seaholm, they've had a lot of heartbreaks. A lot of tough luck, and for that for for them, it's looking like they're going to miss the playoffs again. Now they got to play Groves, which is going to be really difficult for them. But you know, but at the end of the day, you know, it's right now who's better right now. And Seaholm has proven that they're struggling a little bit, you know, with Devere, and they they had a chance to pull it off, but they end up losing a heartbreaker. Rochester, you know, for them, you know, this is a big win for them. Of course, um, they still um, got to play Stony Creek later in the year. I mean, for them, you know, senior experience, Eric Vernon. I mean, Rochester's won two straight games, which is huge for that program. You know, they, I mean, like they're trying to, they're trying to, um, they, you know, they sit at two and three right now. And basically, when you look at Rochester, schedule still, they've already played Oak Park. They got Harrison this week. And, you know, the rest of the schedule, I think, is very favorable for Rochester going forward. So, you know, Rochester could be a team worth watching going on. But if they get by Harrison, you know, who knows? They could be, a, they could be an interesting football team to keep an eye on at 3-3. Three and three. So, if that's it, they get by Harrison. So, that's a really interesting football team to keep an eye on there. I think the best game on the league this week, I mean, like, now a lot of people say West Bloomfield Adams that was one of the best ones, but but Groves and Harrison triple overtime, 32-31. It's Harrison's second loss to the Falcons in two years. Of course, last year was 14-7 in favor of the, um, of the Falcons over the Hawks. But, you know, when you look at this one, this one is shocking because you look at, Groves dominated, played well in the first half. They controlled things in the first half. Harrison, on the other hand, responded in the second half, played a really great second half, and basically just, you know, got at the game in the overtime. You know, it ended up being real crazy. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, you know, when you look at it, Harris, I mean, the game was tied, I think it was, 10-10 before they went into triple overtime. And, you know, so it was very interesting to say the least how um, that game unfolded. But for Groves, this is a big win for them. You know, a lot of people thought Groves was left for dead after the loss to Oak Park the following week. And, you know, and I admit it, I was starting to write off on Groves, especially with what happened in wake of that loss to Oak Park. But now Groves right now, they're starting to get their act together beat a really good Harrison team. And, you know, when you look at Harrison, you know, they put them back in the spot again. Now Harrison now sits at 3-2. They got to play Rochester. And 
for Groves, you know, they've got a fable schedule throughout. I mean, they still got to play. Um, they got Troy this week. I really think Troy for Troy for some reason, I think is benefiting because they're playing a. Um, they really have one big win in my opinion, really one, and that was that game against Avondale. But but we'll talk about Troy in a minute here. But I just could not believe how um, Groves has bounced back from this. I mean, the adversity. They're young. I know they're riding. Um, I mean, I know that Groves is riding. Um, you know, Chase Ford, a really good running back, no doubt. But you know, I'm just shocked with how the way that you know Groves has kept the program together, bounced them. Um, they were very senior heavy last year when they went to the state semifinal. But now they're very young this year, and Brandon Flaherty's done a really nice job getting that team to believe in the system, and now Gro here's Groves. They're sitting in a really nice spot to get back in the postseason. So for Groves, is, for them, this is a good situation for him. For Harrison, I think they're fine, um, even though they still got to play Oak Park later in the year, which I think is going to be a really interesting matchup there. Um, so Harrison, they're going to have to get some things addressed. You know, depth's a big concern for this team. Defense was a big concern for this team. They did not play well defensively, especially in the first half. So for Harrison, you know, they've got to get some things fixed. They've got to get some things addressed heading forward into that, into that, um, heading into the rest of the season. You know, when you look at games where you really got to look, you got to really look at the um, officiating as a big, make, big question mark. Um, I think the Lake Orient South Harrison Tech totally describes this, um, totally describes this what happened on Friday night. I mean, the officiating, I thought, was horrible at best. And resulted in a 24-16 win for the Warriors over the Dragons. Now, there were two plays I thought that made, um, Lake Orion had two touchdowns called back. Both of them were just, one was just a horrible call on the other side of the field, and yet the official pulls up flag. Lake Orion could have, it would have been down two, but instead, a referee just pulls the flag out and, and calls a holding call. There, there's evidence, you know, when you look at it. I, looked, I watched the film, and there's clearly no holding call. So I think the officiating crew really took a game from Lake Orion away. And, they're the re and, and now there was one play I thought personally that, that um, when you look at that game, that... Um, going to have your head scratching. And that was a fourth down play where the Dragons end up going for it instead of kicking a field goal, which would have made it a 19-16 game, would have kept momentum. But, you know, they went for it, passed it on complete, and then two plays later, Southfield goes down and scores a touchdown. You know, and they end up getting the two-point conversion. So, you know, just really two, two three plays decided that game. And for Lake Orion, of course, they played a murder's row of a schedule when you look at playing Chippewa Valley, Adams, West Bloomfield, and, of course, Southfield Arts and Tech. Of course, um, all those teams, really good teams. Of course, Chippewa Valley is doing very well in the Macomb Area Red Conference. Um, you look at Adams, we know what they have. Um, West Bloomfield, we know what they have. Southfield Arts and Tech, we know what they have. I mean, they're good teams. And they still got to play Clarkson, which is going to be very tough for them. They got Blueberry Hills this week. It's an interesting matchup for the Dragons going against the Blackhawks in that one. So we'll see what happens there. But for Southfield Arts and Tech, of course, um, winning a tough one on the road. Winning on the road is never easy in high school football. It never is. And for they have a quarterback in John Darby, who I personally think is better than Sam Johnson. I think Darby's a better quarterback. I think he's a better read option quarterback. He's a better he's better at the zone read than Sam Johnson was. But you know, but Darby led that team down the field on three occasions. He scored one off run and scored two off the pass. So, you know, I think John Darby's gonna be very critical for the Warriors going forward. I really do. But my point on the officiating in that game, did I think Lake Oregon got screwed? Yeah. They got screwed, you know, by the officiating in that game. But they had chance, but 
on a defensive purpose, they, they had chances. Couldn't come through. And now they sit one and four. Danger missing the playoffs. You know? Now they can still get in five and four. But they got to win out for that to happen. But it's looking real bleak right now for the Dragons. They just got to take it one game at a time and move on. But I really think the officiating played really gave that game away for Lake Orion. Um, despite that one bat, despite that one question we'll call on fourth down, I thought they played even with them. Discipline and penalties were just atrocious. You know, the penalties, Lake Orion had 12 penalties for 105, 17 penalties for 105 yards. Five of those were on um, delay game penalties. That can't happen. That's, un that's discipline. That is discipline right there. You know, so for Lake Orion, personally, they have to be more disciplined. If they're going to do well, they have to be more disciplined. A team that's red hot right now is Avenue. The Yellow Jackets um, beat Royal Oak 21-7. They've won three straight games since starting off 0-2. And the reason why they're, they sit 3-2 is because of Adam Matthew, their quarterback. He counted for over 200 yards of total offense against the Ravens. So when you look at Avondale, whatever Materia does, he's going to he's the guy that's got Avondale going in the right direction right now for Coach from Ed Couturier and the Yellow Jackets. Now, when you look at Avondale, you know, this is a team that I said before the start of the year could, could run the table. So far they have not because they've had two tough losses. They lost to Troy, and they lost to Hazel Park. Hazel Park's an interesting team. But for Avondale, they're, they're, they're doing very well right now. They're starting to turn it around and believe in themselves and believe in the system. So it's a good way to start for Avondale. Speaking of a team Avondale lost to, it's the Troy Colts. Here's a team that sits 4-1. Coming on, they're being a the team they're supposed to beat. They beat Rochester, had an ugly game with Stony Creek where, in, in which they won that one. And then they beat Berkeley 24-9 last week. Now the schedule gets real tough. Starting off with Groves at home, it's going to be an interesting matchup between Groves and Troy. But if, but if Troy can win at least two of those games, one of those games, then this could be a team that can make a shocking playoff run. And that would be something that Troy has not done since 2007. And, you know, when you look at the Colts, you know, they have, I mean, like, this would be an interesting accomplishment for the Colts under, um, under, under Chris Frazier on their in his first year is get the Colts to playoffs. That would be something. But they really have not proven that they have beaten the good teams. They, when they, the team, the really good team they played, their best one's Avondale, but then when they played Harrison, they just got destroyed 30 to 3 by them. And they still got to play Groves, still got to play Oak Park, which I think Troy's going to get just destroyed. But the game I think they're going to need is that Seahome game. And we don't know how the Maples mindset is after what happened. And then, of course, Troy Athens, where Troy has been just completely dominated by the Red Hawks. Even though Troy Athens is not a very good team right now, the way they've been playing. So, very manageable, very favorable schedule for Troy, but they have to win at least either one of the three games as mentioned and then beat Troy Athens. So, that's going to be a very tough task for um, Chris Frazier's team going forward. And... I don't know if I see him winning another game. I really don't. It's hard for me to describe. It really is. I mean, for Troy. It really is a hard thing to describe for him. Is that game. So when you look at other teams, you know, teams that really surprised me, I got to look at Hazel Park. I mean, Gary Griffin's defense was doing very well. They played well. They did. They they mastered a lot of things, but then they played a team in Clintondale who is very high-octane offense, one of the top teams in Class C, and yet 
they give up 30 points and lose 30 to 14. What happened to his defense in that game? Now, Clintonville's got a good team. There's no doubt about that. So, but, you know, Hazel Park's a bigger enrollment. What bothers me is Hazel Park's a bigger enrollment, and they allow 30 points. That's the most they allowed since they lost, since, they, since the Warren Fitzgerald put 32 on them. So, when you look at this, when you look at Hazel Park, you're playing, you play Warren Fitzgerald, put up 30, put 32 on you. And then, of course, you play Clintondale, they put up 30 on you. Those are the two games you got to look at. Now, what helps Hazel Park is they still control their own destiny in the blue. They still got to play Ferndale. Ferndale's rolling right now, the way they're playing. I think Ferndale's the better team here. I think Ferndale's, Ferndale's the better team in the blue division. They're just rolling people right now, the way they're playing. They should have no problem with Royal Oak this week. But Ferndale Hazel Park could be a really interesting game to decide the blue championship. Because that could decide the blue title. It's Ferndale and Hazel Park. Now Avondale's still in the mix. They I mean, Fern I mean Avondale's still in the mix. They did um they lost to Hazel Park, but they beat Ferndale. So, you know, so it's it's basically those three teams that have a great shot at winning the championship. Is Avondale Hazel Park, Ferndale. Those are three teams. Team I've been most disappointed with early on, I mean, in the season's been Farmington. Uh, now, despite the fact they won 46-6 against Pontiac, I mean, you know, their defense is still a problem. Their offense is a mess. I mean, what's hard to think about? I mean, what really is hard to think about when you look at, when you look at um, a team like Farmington? I mean... I know it's hard to change culture overnight, but it's basically the same staff. You put up 46, it's not good. I mean, you put up 46, he'll Pontiac the six points. That's not good. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens going forward. Um, what recapping last week, of course, um, Ferndale putting up 36 on North Farmington. Um, I mean, every time I look at North Farmington's uniforms, they're not being mean. I've talked to Bob Kiaz about this many times. They really need to change them now. I mean, seriously, seriously, please change those uniforms now. Um, Oxford, I was surprised that they were blown up by Clarkson, 48 nothing. Really surprised. Um, Stony Creek, I did not see that score come against Oak Park, even though Oak Park's a very good team. Blue Bay Hills. Good way to bounce back at the put giving up 40 um, after giving up um, 54 to Adams last week. Put up 40 on Troy Athens. You know, so, and of course, you know, we'll see what happens. We shall see what happens um, going forward. We'll preview the um, week six matches uh, later in the show. So, okay, now we come back, we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about the volleyball matchups here. Of course, some very interesting ones coming up here on OA Now. Welcome back to OA Now. Sammy Termina here. Of course, um, really interesting matchups coming up around the league, um, especially in the volleyball ranks. Of course, when you look at the red, when you look at the red, I mean, like when you look at, of course, my top ten teams in the red. I mean, like you got to look at top ten teams, especially. Heading in later in the year, you gotta look at the um, you gotta look at a team that's really you got the big matchup on Tuesday between Lake Orion and Clarkson. That's gonna be a really crazy intense game between those two teams. Stony Creek is a team that um that could be an interesting um interesting for um in, they're an interesting team to keep an eye on and you know so when you look at Stony Creek, you know they got one loss. They're sitting. They're sitting in an interesting spot because that win against Lake Orion is huge for them. And then, of course, you have the Clarkson one. The Clarkson loss is why they sit right now with that one loss. But Stony Creek has not played Troy yet, which is going to be really interesting, that matchup, because Stony Creek's got a really good team. I mean, Troy, of course, we know about Jessica Robson and Fran Alio. I mean, but they're an interesting team to keep an eye on right there. And a matchup I'm curious to see. And it's going to be an odd matchup, but Oxford taking on Troy Athens could be an could be a doozy of a matchup uh, on Tuesday. That could be a really interesting game. And the reason why I say that is because Brian Kim has got Oxford. Um, 
you know, there's, both teams are struggling off the 0-3 starts, but Oxford's very competitive, you know, when you look at Oxford. Troy Athens, when you look at this team, they're very young. They are very, very young. And I think that's a question for um, Christy Stanchuk's team is, you know, is you're basically, I think Troy Athens, in my opinion, they're in a, they're in the wrong division. I really think that they're playing teams that I think are, I'm not being mean here, but I think they're just, I think they're a little more superior to them. When you look at playing teams like Clarkston, Lake Orion, Stony Creek, I mean, Seahome, Bloomby Hills, I mean, their team, I think that, you know, benefited from having experience, but also winning the, um, the division. Of course, they were in the blue for a while, and then they went to the white, won that division. I mean, right now, you see the white division. Adams is rolling right now. Adams is rolling. I think that Adams-Harrison matchup is going to be really interesting. I really do. Of course, when you look at Harrison, a team, you know, a lot of people, I thought personally with Harrison was they were going to struggle a little bit <laughs> with the um, – and that being a concern, but they just won the city championship. They just won the city cup from North Farmington and Farmington. And that was something to say the least. That was shocking with the way that, um, with the way that that came out. And you look at Harrison, Harrison on a collision course with Rochester Adams could set up some things, really interesting things, especially the side who wins the white division this year. And it's possible. It's possible. Whoever wins that matchup between Harrison and Adams is going to win the white division. Now, when you look at the district situation, how that's unfolded for both those teams, Harrison's situation is a little more bleak when you look at looking at Farm Hills Mercy. Do I think they can get the district final? Sure. But, you know, if they win the league title... Then you got to go through Farm Tales Mercy, and Loretta Vogel's team is very good this year. I mean, Farm Tales Mercy's done a really good job this year. But for Adams, Adams is a, in an interesting spot because it's odd for Adams because when you look at the basketball districts, you know, their girls and boys basketball teams are in a district where they are used to seeing them. But when you look at Adams, they're in a district with Birmingham Marion, and Bloomby Hills. That's odd. It really is. Bloomby Hills has been one of my disappointing teams so far this volleyball season, especially in league. But when you look at Birmingham Marion, of course, they're coached by Lauren DeCat. <clears throat> and you basically look at Birmingham Marion, they're starting to get their act together a little bit. I mean, it's taken a little while to adjust to DeCat's system over from Andrea Kalzinski, who used to coach at Birmingham Marion. Now you're bringing in Lauren Duquette and her system over to Birmingham Marion. Of course, um, very legendary program. But for Bloomfield Hills, this is a team I thought would do some things. I really thought this team could, could do some things, could do some damage. But now they sit one and two. And they had two suites against them, which was Stony Creek and, of course, um, Lake Ori. Of course, when you look at the um, both those games, Boomba Hills did not play very well in those games. I mean, they lost at home Lake Ori, they were lost on the road to Stony Creek, and they still haven't played Clarkson yet. So, could that be another sweep against Boomba Hills? It's possible. They haven't played Troy yet either. So, Troy and Troy's a team, Troy's a team that Got a lot of questions that um, needs to be addressed. I think Troy's a team that really needs a lot to address heading in. And I think the Colts will be that team, you know, that could that could surprise some folks. They could. They really much they they could very well could. So when you look at Troy, you know, they're red hot, right? I mean, they're playing, they're they're getting their act together right now. But when I look at in the blue division, I still think it's Farmington's division to lose. I really still believe it's their division to lose. 
But in the white division, it's either going to be Adams or Harrison that win that. I don't think Avondale has enough to do well in that division or Groves or West Booth. I still think it's Adams or Harrison. In the red, of course, it's – the red, this is going to get really interesting because there's a matchup on Tuesday called Lake Orion versus Clarkston. That could, that's going to decide a lot of things. A lot of things. You look at Clarkston. They sit four, They sit 3-0. and oh. They beat Troy. They beat Stony Creek. Both those teams have one loss. Lake Orion is a team they haven't played yet. Now for the Dragons, this is a team that sits at 2-1 and one in the league having that shocking five-game loss of Stony Creek, but they bounced back, destroyed Troy Athens, and beat um, Luke Bay Hills. I mean, this is an interesting matchup because there are going to be some keys in this matchup of what's going to happen here. Now, Lake Orion and Clarkson played each other three times this season, all in, turn all in tournaments or in the quads. Of course, Lake Orion's won all three meetings so far. But if there's one thing with Clarkston, one thing with this team, is that Clarkston gets better in the middle to the end of the season. That's why you see all this, all the runs that Clarkston's on. Is Clarkston, they get better middle to the late of the season. That's how they do. I mean, that's how they get to play well. I mean, you look at, and of course, Lake Orion and Clarkston, Lake Orion's an interesting team because they've been pretty consistent. They've been pretty consistent the way they've been playing. They've won three tournaments so far. I mean, they've they've been they've been playing well. You know, they only had the only games they've had that the only game they had that hiccup was Stony Creek. And Paige Briggs did not even play in that game. She didn't play in that game. So when you look at the keys of that matchup. And the keys to that game is for Lake Orion is this team cannot have mental, mental mistakes, mental relapses. They really cannot have that mental mistake. They can't have no service errors. They've got to play well. And I think having a full week of rest is going to help this team. I really do. They didn't play a tournament this weekend. So we'll see what type of team they have. Well, I think Lake Orion is a really good team. They are. And, but we'll see if that week of rest helps them or hurts them. We'll see. And then, of course, we look at Clarkston. Yes, Clarkston's got Abby Malinowski. There's no doubt about that. She's a very good player. There's a reason why she's going to Michigan. There's a reason why. She is that good of a player. And then the question now falls for Clarkston, for Kelly Petter's team, is... Malinowski, who else? Who else steps up? Could it be Jennifer Chapinski? Could it be Kaya Lukenbach? Could it be Grace Kraft? I mean, last season, Clarkson had Sarah Austin. Sarah Austin was a very good player. No doubt. She was, she, she was a very good player to, to, to go along with Malinowski because he had Malinowski deal with on the opposite side, and then you have, of course, you had Kraft on the other side. And then, of course, you had um, Austin on the other side. So you had two really good hitters for Clarkson. I'm curious, and I think Kelly Penner's still, I think, trying to search for who is going to be the outside hitter. You know, you have Luca back in the middle. And, of course, you have, um, and, of course, you have Chupinski being your setter. Or, you have, and, of course, um, and then, of course, could it be Grace Kraft? Could it be Grace Kraft? You know, Clarkson, of course, let's not forget, this is a program that is really, really good. When you look at, of course, Clarkston as a whole, their sophomore class, their current sophomore class, did not lose a set last year. They were undefeated last year. So, so when you look at it here, I mean, Clarkson, for the future, they're, so, they're set. They're really set. <laughs> but for Lake Orion in this game of Clarkston, you're going to have to ride what's gotten you what's gotten you this 
And I think they will. I really think they will. Because when you look at, of course, you look at Paige Briggs, you look at Daniel Sargent, Wen McCauley, Uriah Collage. I mean, they're going to have to ride them. And somebody else is going to have to step their game up. You look at a Sidney Smith or a Lauren Van Loon. They're going to have to step their game up. So I think what's key in this game is going to be is we know the stars are going to show up. The question is, who's going to shock us all? Of course, last, se of course, last season, Clarkston lost to Lake Orion at Clarkston and then got him back in the, in the um, district final. You got to wonder, could it be the same or could it be different? You know, when you look at the regular season match at Lake Orion, but the district's at Clarkson. So you look at, it's a possible district final preview when you look at it. I know both teams have hyped up this matchup, and it deserves the hype it gets, it's getting. It's two teams back in 2011. They were in the um, state semifinal. I think it should be a state semifinal matchup every year. But the MHA, what they did was put Lake Orion and Clarkson together because of their pro close proximity. Remember back in 2011, of course, they moved Clarkson north and west. Lake Orion went east. And, of course, those two teams met in Battle Creek in the semifinal. So we'll see. We'll see what type of teams um, these two are going to be made on Tuesday. We'll see. But I think it's a very interesting matchup. Good folks at Owen TV are going to be covering that game. So you will have coverage of this matchup between the Dragons and the Wolves, of course, on Orient Neighborhood Television. Of course, um, we'll see what happens going forward in this matchup. But right now, when you look at it here, clearly my top 10 right now in the volleyball ranks, um, I would have to say Rochester 10. They had a nice win against Berkeley the other day. Um, Oxford 9, even though, despite the fact they're an 0-3 in league team right now, but I think Brian with Brian Kim there, I think they're going to be all right going forward. Harrison 8, I think Harrison with that city championship is going to help them going forward. Seahome 7, Seahome's a quiet team to keep an eye on. They've been really quiet this year, the Maples, but they're an interesting team to keep an eye on. Booby Hill 6, I'm really disappointed with, the, um, with their start, you know, especially two sweets against Stony Creek and Lake Orion. They haven't played Clarkson yet, so that's, and Troy, that's going to be dangerous for them. Adams, my fifth ranked team. Of course, the white, very interesting there. Fourth, I got to give it to Troy. Um, won the Tribune Invitational last weekend. Of course, beat Oxford. But we'll see what Troy's made of, of course, when they um, played Clarkson already, still got to play Lake Orion and Stony Creek. That's going to be interesting. Stony Creek, three. Lake Orion 2, Clarkson 1 right now, you know. So we'll see what happens, despite the fact that um, Lake Orion's ranked higher than Clarkson. But, you know, Clarkson hasn't lost in league yet. So we'll see what happens. We shall see what happens going forward. Okay, now we come back. We're going to preview week six's football games here on OA Now. Welcome back to OA Now. I'm Sammy Termina here, of course. And we're going to preview the um, week six matchup for football, of course. Some of the games will be taking place on Thursday, and some of them will be played Friday. Of course, the Thursday games will be due to Young Kippur, of course, um, as a um, holiday that's celebrated. Um, it'll be on Friday, so, you know, so we'll see what happens um, heading into the games. And um, we'll get to our first game, which is going to be Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory taking on Far North Farmington. Of course, this game... It's going to be a really tough one for Coach Bob Kiazza. And the reason why is last week, Ferndale lost 36 0 to, um, no, North Farmington lost 36 0 to Ferndale. And they, they have not been good. They're 1 in 13 since 2016. And this is a team that's got, this is a, as bad of a matchup as I could think of for the Raiders. They got to play, they've got Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory, who's outscored their opponents 198 to 26, and the 26 points they allowed was in only one game, and that was their only loss to Warren Michigan Collegiate. 
North Farmington has had trouble scoring and stopping people. They have had a lot of trouble scoring. And you look at that matchup, it's going to be as tough a nails a matchup as it's going to be. And you look at that game. It's going to be, it could be a bloodbath. It seriously could be a bloodbath over at Farmington Hills for North Farmington going against um, Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory. It really well could be. Now, um, I, I really think North Farmington personally is about two, maybe three years away from being, I think could be a really good team. But at the end of the day, I got to give an edge to um, the Irish. I got to give an edge to them because North Farmington, I know they're trying to put a program together there. I think, uh, you know, when you look at this matchup, it's, it's going to be as tough as nails for the Raiders. I don't think they may score against them. I think they're going to give up. You know, they might not. But they'll be competitive. Even though I don't like their, even though the jersey designs, I keep seeing them, scare the living daylights out of me. Really, I'm begging, and, you know, I'm really excited to, um, help Coach Bob Chiesa with his jersey designs next year. Because those jerseys at North Farmington have to go. Seriously. But in the game, I just think Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory will be too much for the Raiders. I really do. Because the difference is going to be is the Irish have athletes. North Farmington trying to change systems and all that. I think it's going to be a really tough task for them. So I got the Raiders. Um, I got the Raiders losing this one to the Irish. Next we got is Hazel Park taking on Pontiac. And last season, this was a 38-25 game in favor of the Vikings. Pontiac's coming off a horrible 46-6 loss to Farmington. Hazel Park lost 30-14 to Clintondale. That's unbelievable. Really is. And, you know, somebody has to win this game. I think at the end of the day, it's going to be Hazel Park that wins this game at Wizard Stadium because I think they got enough talent and senior experience. I think Gary Griffin's going to give up. I don't think he'll give up a point, but we'll see. We shall see. If Hazel Park gives up 26 to 28 points, then I would have some concern for Coach Gary Griffin's defense. I still couldn't believe what happened to his defense, really. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is a matchup where Hazel Park, I think, is going to show their will at Wizard Stadium and embarrass Pontiac in front of a global scale. They really will. So we'll see what happens there in that matchup. Next is Seaholm at Stony Creek. You know, this is an interesting matchup because this may be a trap game for Seaholm because Stony Creek has really struggled. And we don't know where Seaholm's mindset is after losing 28-27 to Rochester. We don't know where their mindset is. Stony Creek was shellacked 48-0 by Oak Park. So when you look at this matchup, you got to think. you got to think where Seaholm's mental mind state's at. But you also got to look at where Stony Creek's mental mind state's at. So look at that one and look at the other one. So... A lot of people are going to pick Seahawks to win this game. I don't think I don't think that could be the case because we don't know where the Maple's heads are at. Now Stony Creek gives up a lot of points. Seahawks gives up a lot of points, which is very odd, especially because Seahawks has a senior heavy team. Very odd. But in this matchup, you got to think games at Stony Creek. Games at um, the game, I mean, like, see at home, they're not playing well right now. At the end of the day, here, I think this could be the perfect opportunity for Frank Potesma to finally let loose. Now, Stony Creek's offensive line is a big issue. It is a big issue. But, you know, this could be a game where if Stony Creek cannot stop Paul Jokic, then, you know, I don't know what to say. All that hype by Stony Creek's line, led by Hunter LaFave, 
Could be off or not. But I got Stony Creek winning this one. Being at home, tough game, tough scenario. Let's look at um, let's look at our next game is Orient taking on Bluebeer Hills. I mean, this one's going to be really interesting. Last season, I thought terrible fishing did Orient in last did Orient in in that game when they lost twenty one up. Last week, horrible fishing did Orient in, but there was one play that Orient that I thought if the Dragons could kick a field goal. You know, you're up 19-16, you know, you have momentum still on your side. You go for it, incomplete pass. But when you look at, when you look at the Dragons, they seem to find found identity on the offensive side of the ball. They found a quarterback, Blaze Lohr. I thought he played very well last week, but there's some decision making he's, he needs to fix. Lake Orion has got to be more disciplined. They've got to be more disciplined. I mean, you can't have 17 penalties for 105 yards. When you have five delay game penalties, you have... But I thought the two holding calls were... The two touchdowns that were called back, I thought both of them were just terrible calls. Just horrible calls. That's why I'm saying the officiating played a big role in that game. Now, the defense of the Dragons will be tested again this week. And their pass defense has not been good. It's been well documented that their secondary has really struggled against the pass. You know, last week they allowed two touchdowns to John Darby. I mean, and then of course um, against West Bloomfield, they allowed, they allowed 505 yards to Bryce Beasley and five touchdowns to, to West Bloomfield. They allowed three to Adams. So it's well documented, and Booby Hills has a very good offense, and quarterback John Paddock and running back Ty Slezinski. So this is going to be a really tough matchup for Lake Orion, going up against those two type those two players. Question is going to be is how good Booby Hills' line is up front. That's the question, and then of course, the defense. You know, of Booby Hills led by Jack Sape, they're very good. But they lost 54 to Adams last week. They look good against Troy Athens. They shut them out 48 nothing last week. Boomer Hills is a senior heavy team. But I think Orient seemed to find an identity, and I think they should be motivated what happened to them last year. And this team's got no more room for error. So <laughs> in this matchup here, I like Lake Orient to pull this one out. I think the difference is going to be Blaze Lore. I really do. And I think it's going to be Orient's. Offensive efficiency is going to keep this one, is going to make sure that their defense doesn't see a lot of time on the field. Because if their defense sees a lot of time on the field, Lake Orient's in trouble. But if their defense is off the field, you know, for an extended amount of time, it keeps Paddock and Szynski off the field. So you basically look at that matchup, it's basically is who is can Lake Orion sustain enough in a time of possession battle and not make some bad penalties? I think Lake Orion will do just enough this week. I really think they're going to do just enough this week, which will be a difference maker. I think they're going to beat Bloomby Hills. I really do. So, and I think they're going to keep their slim playoff hopes alive heading into next week. So we'll see. We shall see. Next is Avondale and Farmington. Farmington's been my disappointment. Avondale's rolling. Farmington won 46-6 last week. Avondale won 21-7 last week. Looking at this matchup, yeah, it's at Farmington. But I think the difference in this game is going to be is Avondale's got more athletes to the outside, and they have a quarterback in Adam Matthew, who I think is going to really do some damage against a a Farmington defense that's been just completely beyond awful. Beyond awful. I mean that. So when I look at that matchup, I think it's going to be a complete blowout. I really look at this blowout, and I think Avondale's going to win this game. Now, I don't like the uniforms they wear because the Adidas brand, but 
I think they're going to rule. I think they're going to win. So they're going to win convincingly over Farmington. I think they're going to win convincingly. So we'll see what they have. We shall see what they have. I think Avenel wins this week. Next is Ferndale Royal Oak. This is a trap game for the Eagles. They're rolling people right now. Royal Oak's a dangerous team because now their offense has been a problem. Royal Oak's offense has been a big problem. Teams not named Pontiac the last two weeks, which has all been losses for Royal Oak, they've only scored 14 points. That's not good. They have enough defense. They have enough. But Ferndale's a high-octane offensive machine when you've got Zoller Little and Deshaun Smith. they got other athletes, too, that can do some damage. So when you look at this matchup, Ferndale we know can score. They're going to score a ton of points. It's just Royal Oak defensively, it's going to be really interesting how they're going to handle that. And can Royal Oak score enough points to, get to hold up with Ferndale? That's the question. So we'll see when that one. I think Ferndale wins this one because I don't think Royal Oak's going to keep up with Ferndale from an offensive standpoint. I'd be shocked if Ferndale loses this game. I, really, I pretty much will be shocked that they lose this game because Ferndale, they're rolling right now. Ever since that win against Birmingham Detroit Country Day, a lot of people are writing Ferndale off. Now they're starting to get back on the bandwagon. And it's very interesting to see what the Eagles have. Be very interesting. You know, when you look at the top 10, you know, Ferndale, you know, I had them when they beat Detroit Country, they were 10. Now they're 7 in the poll. So we'll see what they got. We'll see what they got. Next we have is Harrison and Rochester. This one's interesting because we don't know Harrison's psyche after losing a triple overtime last week. Are they going to be mad? Are they going to just lay down? I don't think they're going to lay down because John Harrington's a heck of a coach. But now they're taking on a Rochester team that's won two straight games and picking up a big win at the Maple Forest and winning 28-27. So, all is well for the Falcons. I think Harrison's mad. I think the Hawks are mad. They're upset. They're furious. And I think at the end of the day, I think Harrison's going to beat Rochester pretty convincingly at home. And it's going to be a long day for Rochester because Harrison, very athletic in the secondary, despite the fact they don't have a lot of depth there. But I just think with enough secondary athleticism, Harrison's going to beat Rochester pretty convincingly. Next game we got is Clarkson and Troy Athens. This is going to get real ugly quick for Troy Athens. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're at home. But seriously, Clarkson put 48 on Oxford on the road last week. Troy Athens gave up 48 on the road last week to Booby Hills. Clarkson is 58 and 9 since 2011. Troy Athens is 13 and 37 since 2011. You know what's the trend here? Do you? I'm sorry if you're a Troy Athens fan, but this is going to get ugly quick. You might be giving up maybe high end 40s to low end to low end 60s. That's how bad it's going to get. It's going to get really, really ugly between the Wolves and the Red Hawks. I'm sorry. It really is. One of the best matchups around the league is going to be the Falcons and the Colts. Groves at Troy. Of course, um, Troy is 4-1, but it's hard to figure this team out. Because Troy, their wins, their best win is Avondale. 48-25, and those playing a lot better. But they beat Rochester, Stony Creek, and um, Berkeley last week. They haven't played Oak Park, Groves, Seaholm, or Troy Athens yet. Those are the final four games. But Groves is right now on an emotional high, winning 32-31 against Harrison in triple overtime. Whereas Troy won 24-9 over Berkeley at home. So when you look at this matchup, when you look at this matchup, it seems to favor Groves on paper, but Troy could be a team that could surprise some folks. 
They could very well, it could be a close game. This could be a really close game. But I just think at the end of the day, Groves has enough offensively to basically sink Troy and go in there and beat Troy. I think, and I said Troy was in a lot of trouble. There's a reason why I think Groves <coughs> is going to beat Troy and why I think the Colts are in trouble. Because the schedule they haven't played yet. Now, they have to win at least to Troy. At the, uh, for Troy to get in the playoffs, they have to win one of those games and the Troy Athens game. I don't see him beating Groves. I don't see him beating Oak Park. I don't know if they can beat Seahom, to be honest with you. So, they got to win one of those three games, including, and they got to beat the, they got to beat Troy Athens. Now, Troy Athens had Troy's number lately. So, we'll see what happens there. But I got Groves winning that one pretty convincingly. Next is Berkeley Oak Park. This ain't going to be pretty for Berkeley. I'm sorry. Going on the road to Night Valley. Lost 24-9 to Troy last week. Oak Park destroyed Stony Creek 48-0. Have really destroyed their league opponents 158-14 since that loss to Utica Eisenhower. So, pretty much, yeah. It's going to be a long night for, um, for Billy Keenis and the um, Bears over at um, Night Valley against a Coach Greg Carter team. So, it's going to be a long night for Oak Park. For Berkeley, it really will be. I think it's going to be. I think Berkeley is giving up over 40 points this week. I really do. Question is, can Berkeley keep up scoring? So that's the question there. So we'll see what happens there. Next, we have Oxford and West Bloomfield. As mentioned, we don't know the psyche of the Wildcats. This is worse than matchup I can think of this weekend, and I'm not being mean to Oxford because. They were drowsed by Clarkson, 48-0. Oxford's defense has been really struggling all year. Really has. And West Bluefield's got seven Division I recruits. For Oxford to have a chance this game, time possession is key. And I don't know if they do. Time possession is key for them. This is going to get ugly in the swamps. I'm sorry. If you're an Oxford fan, you know, it's going to be, it's going to get real ugly. And... It's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. I think West Bloomfield wins this convincingly, but it's going to get rough. It will be it rough. And then our last game is probably the best game around the league played this weekend. It's Southfield Arson Tech at Adams, of course. Adams is coming off a tough loss, 17-16 at home. Southfield Arson Tech survived Lake Orion, 24-16. Um... Adams and Southfield Arts Tech, these two teams do not like each other. These two coaching staffs do not like each other. So this is going to be a really interesting match. I think it's going to come down the wire in this one. Um, I think home field matters in this game, and I think that's what Adams has. So when you look at this matchup here, I think at the end of the day, heading in this matchup, I mean, both these teams are going to be playoff teams. I, I think both these teams are playoff teams. But in this matchup here, if it comes down to discipline, it's favor Adams. But if it comes down to speed and athleticism, it's favor Southfield. Now, the Veer option, the Veer offense can counter a team that runs a, an option offense. So base can run, that ha, runs an athletic, that runs an athletic offense. So basically, when you look at that situation, is the Veer can counter Southfield's athleticism. But... You know, and time possession is huge in this game. So, at the end of the day, in this matchup here, I like Adams in this one because of the discipline. And, of course, their Veer offense is going to counter. It's going to keep John Darby in the sidelines. So, it could be really interesting going forward. So, in this matchup here, I do like Adams to knock off the Warriors in a really tough physical game. It's going to be close. But we'll see what happens going forward this week. So, that'll, that'll be it for this week's, this week's show. Of course, um... Next week, I will have a guest here um, for the podcast. Of course, um, we'll see what happens going forward. All righty, then. I'll see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you all next week. Bye-bye, everybody.